It's the Eagle Community Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Hello, you're watching The Forum with Mike Kerner this week in for Gary Shorman. We'd like to thank you for joining us. The Forum brought to you by Hayes Med. And our guest this week is Shannon Damel, the new principal at O'Laughlin Elementary. Now, a lot of people probably recognize you. You've been around USD 49 for a couple of years now. Yep. Uh, Washington Elementary for mm -hmm. a while, then Hayes Middle School. I still want to call it Felt. Do people still <laughs> try to call it Felt yes, Middle School? Yes, they do. All the time. <laughs> and then uh, now you are uh, moving on to O'Laughlin Elementary this year. So that's going to be a little bit tough for you, getting used to that, isn't it? It'll be kind of going back to my roots since I started in elementary, so kind of looking forward to that, but really enjoyed the middle school too. What we're going to do is in the second half of the show, we're going to talk about your new position and how that all came about. But what I think we want to do is we want to kind of get in your, little, your background a little bit and kind of go through, this is Shannon's life. And we're going to find out a little bit about you. And, and you know, when you were younger, did you think about becoming a teacher or even a principal? I mean, what age maybe did you start thinking about that? Well, until I was about a senior in high school, I thought I was going to be a lawyer. And then I did a teacher's aid class my senior year and was placed in a first grade classroom. And from that point on, I knew I needed to be a teacher. Somebody around education. Yeah. Yep. And then um, I went to Hutchison Community College right out of high school um, on basketball and softball scholarships and um, made my way to Fort Hayes, continuing my athletic career and um, really got into my teaching blocks at that point. I'd taken some time at Hutch Juco to become a substitute teacher because I had heard horror stories <laughs> about people getting into their uh, student teaching and not really wanting to become a teacher. So I did that to make sure that was the route I wanted to go. And it was, even after um, a semester of substituting, I still wanted to do it and uh, led us to Fort Hayes. Uh, my husband and I, um, both came from Hutch Juco and um, have really basically been here ever since. We finished in um, 2001 and then I went immediately back into administration. I knew at some point I'd always you know, been in leadership roles throughout my life, um, that that was a direction that I really thought that I would want to go. Um, it happened a few years earlier than I thought it would, just some opportunities that opened up for me here in the district. Um, I'm very proud and very honored to be a member of the administrative team in Hayes. Uh, we have a lot of great leaders and you know I have some huge you know shoes to fill now but um, I will definitely do my best at that. Um, Are there certain certifications you have to get as opposed to just being a teacher to go into administrative? Yes, you have to get your master's in educational administration and then you have to pass an exam. Um, it's very thorough, <laughs> very difficult, very expensive. Um, and, then, and then you have that, but you have to do that continuing ed just like a teacher does to keep your license current and, and that sort of thing. So um, along the way, I've added other endorsements as well just through my teaching and being at Washington. I added a couple of things that would be beneficial to my students there as well. Now, where did you grow up exactly? Um, I grew up in Canopolis, Kansas. I went through um, Ellsworth School District. Um, I was a Bearcat, so yeah. <laughs> and so now you're here and, and you started out at Washington School. Is that your first teaching job? Yes, right after, well, um, not exactly. It was my first classroom job. Um, when I was still working on my master's, I accepted a reading specialty, specialty uh, position in Great Bend. And then uh, my fourth grade position opened up at Washington and I applied and um, was given that opportunity. So I did teach one semester of reading in Great Bend and then, so the bulk of my career has been here in Hayes. Now, when you were at Washington Elementary, eight years, so, so quite yes. a while there. Yes. Didn't seem, you seemed so young. So, how, <laughs> so um, you were there eight years. Did you also, when you went over to Hayes Middle School, see some of those kids that were you, your students there in fourth yeah, grade? Yeah, that was exciting. Washington? That was exciting. Um, they were like, oh, Mrs. Damel, you're back. And then it was kind of like, oh, is this a good thing or a bad thing? I never but, left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of, it was fun to go, the group that was leaving. Um, that was entering as sixth graders the year that I also entered. It was it was fun to kind of go through that experience with them. Um, you know, we have a small a small 
close-knit family at Washington, and so it was, it was really fun to watch them and track their progress over the last couple of years, along with all of the other students as well. But, you know, it's, it, it would just be like your own family member going through. You want to see how they're doing and probably kept a little bit closer tabs on some of those kiddos than, than I would if they were just, you know, hadn't gone through our building. Because a lot of them, even though they were entering sixth grade at the same time as I was entering the middle school, I have known them since Head Start. Um, because a lot of them started in Head Start and then just never, that, that class never really left. You know, it was a, a big bulk of them that stayed together all the way through um, and are still there this year. But um, so that's really neat to see them grow and mature and get to places that you knew they could always get to. They just needed to find that right route. And that's the beauty of middle school. You know, they have a lot of opportunities to do a lot of different things that interest them and they're not you know, held into that box of elementary. They can kind of spread their wings a little bit, and that's really fun to see. And I'm sure you also have seen this over the years where there's some students, I mean, most of them all have the, the gifts to, to go on to greatness, but you've seen some kids that have struggled when they're younger, and you look back on them now that they're older, and you go, I'm glad, I'm just so happy for this story, and I'm glad they really made it through. Absolutely. You know, we always look at the graduation list um, every year, even when I was still at Washington. We always look for those kiddos, and we always look at... Um, we kind of had a, Mrs. Howard actually in fifth grade kind of turned me on to this when I was a teacher that, you know, she always celebrated that when it was, you know, uh, published in the newspaper or those that made honor roll that were in the middle school and high school. It's something for our students to achieve and strive for. And so it's really neat to even, even beyond middle school to see them graduating and they, they're going on to college and they're going through that process. It's, it's really a special and unique thing as a teacher. You get to see that year after year after year, uh, not only with your own children, but all of the children that come within your lives. So, um, we're, we're pretty blessed in that, in that manner, so. I mean, you know, I, a little story about myself, I've taught for about 15 years too on the university level, and you see students that you've had for about 15 years, and then you see them 15 years later, and you know them, you know they were your student, but just for the, for the sake of me, I, sometimes I forget their names, but you know their faces yes. all the time, and you're glad that they're doing well. Yes, and that, that has happened, even in they get, they change so much from the time I have them in fourth grade to the time that they're in high school, and a lot of times high school, you know, they'll have early release, you know, because of the basketball tournament or whatnot, and they'll come back to their buildings and visit their teachers, which is really cool. Um, but they get there and you're like, oh my goodness, and they, they, they leave your classroom or in the middle of that conversation, you, the name finally pops in. You know who they are, but that, you don't forget their face. It's just changed so much because they've grown. Um, you get those yearbooks out sometimes and you just have to look through them or you see them on the street and you don't get to have a conversation, just hello. Um, but we go back to those yearbooks often and look through and find that face and then we, you know, the name pops back with us. So. And now you've got some, uh, some new kids and, and, and you've got a whole new uh, generation of younger kids coming along here being now the principal at O'Loughlin Elementary. And I think that's what we're going to talk about in the second half of the show, what's happening with O'Loughlin, some of the changes that are going to be made or, or maybe there isn't going to be any changes. <laughs> we'll find out about that. Again, that's the second half of the show. We'll be talking to, again, our uh, guest today, Shannon Damel. Again, uh, the new principal at O'Loughlin Elementary. Today's show brought to you by Hayes Med. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment. Hayes Med is your first and best choice for health care. They're the only facility providing tertiary level services in this region. With more than 70 physicians and 26 specialties, ranging from heart, orthopedic, spine care, cancer, obstetrics and gynecology, wound care, rehabilitation and surgery, including the Da Vinci robotic surgery, Hayes Med is your comprehensive health provider for people throughout Western Kansas. Hayes Med, helping people be healthy. It's a beautiful day in our super high speed internet great customer service neighborhood. Like you, this is where we live. In fact, our company is employee owned, so it's our goal to improve the quality of life for everyone in our community by delivering faster, more reliable internet, clearer, more feature laden phone service, quality TV channels, all with the level of customer service you'd expect from people who are your neighbors. Eagle Communications, our community connected. 
Welcome back to the ECTV Forum, brought to you by Hayes Med. I'm Mike Kerner, in for Gary Shorm this week. By the way, if you've got any questions or comments or show ideas, Gary would love to hear from you. That's gary.shorman at eaglecom.net. By the way, you can look at some of the old uh, shows or some of the upcoming shows uh, maybe in, in the future if you want to. Going on our Facebook page, it's ECTV Forum on Facebook. Our guest this week is Shannon Damel, and she is the new principal at uh, O'Laughlin Elementary. And you've got some big shoes to fill. I think you've probably heard that many, many times. Yes. Uh, Nancy Harmon <laughs> was there for quite a while, mm -hmm. and a lot of people got to uh, know her, and hopefully they'll get to know you in the same way, and they have the same kind of thoughts when you get into your retirement years. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you go back now to uh, teaching elementary school, and mm -hmm. um, this kind of puts you into a principal role. You were at, a, at, at Hayes Middle School last year as assistant principal. Some of those same kind of things you're gonna take back with you to O'Laughlin, and maybe some of the new things that you've learned along the way? Definitely. There are some things that I feel like I'm, I have a huge advantage because I have spent two years at the middle school, so that kind of opened my eyes of how um, we need to better prepare our students so that they're ready for middle school. Um, there's some small things that we can do to, to make it a little bit easier transition for our students and just have them a little bit more prepared. Um, but coming back to elementary, at some point I always thought I envisioned seeing myself back in the elementary school, although it was a very tough decision to leave Hayes Middle School because I thoroughly enjoyed my time there and I really enjoyed the middle school aged students, which when I first got into that I thought, whoo, I don't know if I can handle middle school <laughs> kiddos, but you know, I just, I really uh, was able to connect with them and you know, I built a lot of relationships with those, those students over the last two years. Um, so it was a difficult decision to leave. Um, this is a good fit for our, fam for, for our family personally. Um, you know, I have the opportunity to have our daughters join us at O'Laughlin. Um, and I just enjoy those little ones, those, those hugs. And, you know, those, the six foot tall hugs <laughs> aren't quite the same as little first grade hugs and, you know, that sort of thing. But, um, just kind of a playful kid at heart and I enjoy seeing seeing that on a day-to-day -day basis and you know what what can I bring to the table to make them smile and make them feel better and feel feel great about being at school because they still have a long trek to go um, so I think that's something that will continue and you know I have a very outgoing upbeat personality and I'm sure that will show and the students will hopefully you know enjoy that and you know be able to connect with that now, you uh, worked over the summer probably trying uh -huh. to get ready for this, this new position. Um, is there some things that you did around the school, maybe that uh, maybe some parents that uh, had kids at O'Laughlin last year may see as changes, maybe some different instructors, different teachers? Uh, we didn't do a whole lot of changing. Um, you know, at, right now it's, it's more about getting to know the building, getting to know the staff and the students and the families and, and how that all works really well. We did have a couple of teachers that um, left the building and we did have um, two new teachers that join from outside of our district. Um, we have Misty Lohmeyer is joining our second and third grade loop, and Amy Kelly comes to us from um, Colorado, uh, has a connection to Eagle. Todd Haskell is her fiance, mm -hmm. so uh, she's joining our fourth and fifth grade loop. Um, and then we also joined, a, uh, had a couple of Washington staff members join our O'Laughlin staff. Uh, Dana Crawford is joining us in the K-1 loop. Uh, which will be really exciting. That'll be a, a very, very good addition to our staff, as well as Laura Gon coming in as a Title I reading teacher. Um, she's been a Title I teacher for a long time in the district and will be, wonderful, uh, be a wonderful asset to our staff. Um, and Jackie Liker is re rejoining the staff at O'Laughlin through our art department. Um, she spent a number of years at O'Laughlin as the art teacher, um, spent the last year at Washington. Um, in the office and is now joining our art staff again. So again, you know, I feel like we kind of have a rock star staff, so um, which is something to celebrate that has been, you know, a focus of every administrator as always, but I feel like uh, Mrs. Harmon has done a wonderful job keeping staff that is dedicated to the school and dedicated to the students and 
Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see how all of that works. I know that uh, teachers are the very important part of the school, and uh, you a former teacher too. Now you're in the administration area. Now you've got to keep track of uh, the maintenance people too, and the people <laughs> in the kitchen, and, and learn, I guess, those things about the building, the air conditioner, the heater. I mean, and make sure all those those other things are taken care of on top of those, oh, those older duties that you used to have. Yes, I am fortunate. I worked with the head custodian at Washington. He was also the custodian, head custodian there after Mr. Mr. Pullman had retired and then one of the other custodians also worked at Washington as well. So I came in knowing two-thirds of the custodial <laughs> staff right away, so that was really good. Um, I spent the summertime getting to know the building, not getting lost in you know, the, this wing and that wing. Um, I've met with the kitchen, our head, our head cook. Um, will also be new. She's been on the staff previously, but has been um, or taken the position as our head cook now. Um, so I've met with her. I've pretty much met with almost everyone in the building in some capacity. Um, you know, there's a few more things that I would like to do that's more of a one-on-one -on -one setting with each one of the staff members just to, just to get to know them better and get to know their philosophies, how they operate their classrooms, just different things that I can expect and, and also find out what they expect from me and what, what I can do to make their job better and easier. I know that one of the biggest challenges, I think, for, for you, and, and uh, I think the parents would like to see this too, is figuring out that darn parking lot and how to, <laughs> how to do that at the Laughlin. Yes, I hit that one way the first time in April at, when I was meeting with Mrs. Harmon, and I was like, oh, okay, we're, okay we'll go this way. But yeah, um, it's a little tricky with that little circle drive there, but um, it's pretty well marked. They did a little repainting over the summer to um, make those arrows a little bigger and brighter, so hopefully that will help. But and maybe in a few years, maybe they'll get a larger parking lot. That, Who knows? that would be great, but um, that's probably not you know our top priority right now. Um, we like to put our dollars into the hands of the students as much as we can. But as a principal, and I know we've got a lot of new school board members. Do you have to work closely with school board at all? Do you have to do much with the school board, or, or are they kind of their own entity? Um, you know, that's something over the last couple of years, at least to my understanding, um, that relationship is trying to be built on a closer knit, um, so that we can do more collaboration, you know, more input on both sides, um, teachers to the administration, to the board, and kind of make sure that we are running as one. Um, and that's something that I have enjoyed, that, that relation, seeing that relationship build and the trust build between the board and the district. So, you know, um, each year it's been a little bit more interaction. We, we, last year we had a retreat where it was administrative staff and the board members, and that was really nice. There was a lot of collaboration, a lot of open and honest conversation. And I think in order for our district to be the best district that we can be, we're going to have to have that collaboration and that trust between our board and the administration and, and with our teachers and our parents and our community as a whole. Um, because ultimately it's our community that, if without the community support, our school system is going to fail. And you know, I think that's something that, that I personally would strive at O'Laughlin is to make sure that, you know, that, that communication is there between our families and our school, um, doing everything that we can. You know, it's something I went to a new principal's training last week, and one thing that popped into my mind was having Twitter's all the buzz, and there's, so, there's such a profound opportunity for growth as a professional through Twitter, which I didn't know, but um, so I came up with a little slogan that we're going to um, turn into t-shirts with hashtag all about the kids or all about the students is probably what we'll go with to have a proper term. But, um, you know, I really feel like that's something that has been somewhat of a legacy in our district is no matter what's going on um, politically or budget, you know, we always find a way to keep educating our students. We keep finding a way, and this is district-wide, we keep finding a way to make sure our students are achieving. We keep finding a way to, you know, keep families involved. Um, and so that's something that I will obviously try to continue and even get better at. Now, I don't know if they use this at O'Laughlin, but I know the power school is being used throughout the district. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a wonderful, wonderful thing for, the, for the, the, or the parents because the parents can also see what's happening, see that status updated daily, and, and see what's going on with their, their kids. And they can also kind of get the kids back in line a little bit or, or help them out and kind of work with the teachers a little bit, trying to get those kids up to where they need to be. Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure how the power school works with O'Laughlin yet. Um, because we do portfolio-based um, non-letter grades. Um, 
However, as a parent of children in another building, last year my daughter was able to have, you know, she started receiving letter grades. And so as a parent, that was wonderful. You know, I jumped on that at least once a week um, just to check to make sure she was what, doing what she needed to be doing and we were doing what we needed to be doing as parents. Um, so it, it's definitely a beneficial tool. Um, even and, since you don't, and since you don't do that at O'Loughlin, maybe just some of that communication with parents and teachers probably really works Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Um, some One powerful thing that we can take from Power School is we can mass email parents. We can do it by grade levels, we can do it by classrooms, we can do it school-wide. Um, with our new online enrollment system, you have it's required to have an email address. And so we can quickly reach a large number of our parents in a couple of minute email. Um, so that, that's very helpful. It avoids a lot of phone calls, <laughs> a lot of confusion. So we, that, that's something that you know, we at the middle school last year really utilized, whether it was you know, grade levels for home and school things. Um, so I will bring that back to O'Loughlin and, and implement that probably, probably on a larger scale than it has been in the past. Well, very good. We're about out of time. In fact, we are out of time today on the show. I'm glad you came in and, and let some people know all about you and uh, see a new familiar face and maybe some people see a yes. new face there at O'Loughlin and good luck with the new position. Thank you very much. Thank all you right. for having me. Our guest today is Shannon Damel and she is the new principal at O'Loughlin Elementary. We want to thank you for joining us today on the forum. It's the ECTV forum on channel 14 and 614 brought to you by Hayes Med. I'm Mike Kerner and for Gary Shorman. See you next time. Hayes Med is your first and best choice for health care. They're the only facility providing tertiary level services in this region. With more than 70 physicians and 26 specialties, ranging from heart, orthopedic, spine care, cancer, obstetrics and gynecology, wound care, rehabilitation and surgery, including the Da Vinci robotic surgery, Hayes Med is your comprehensive health provider for people throughout Western Kansas. Hayes Med, helping people be healthy.